Hi everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. I'm sitting here with Mr. Glenn Fricker from Special Media Group. How are you? How's it going, Warren? And Henning Pauly from HP42, is that correct now? That is very British, but it is correct, yes. <laughs> Marvellous. And Henning produced this band called Campaign Like Clockwork. Rather exciting and interesting. And we will create a playlist and put it below. Is He actually has recorded the whole process of recording the album with them over a, f- a few months, is that correct? More than a year now. More than a year. So you can go and watch the process of the recording. The song is called Patiently. It's a rather wonderful song to mix. The prizes are insane. I'm going to look at my notes here and try to get it right. We've got microphones from Lewitt. Stealth Sonics are doing custom IEMs. Odyssey headphones reveal plus software. Audient ID44 and ASP800. Cali speakers. Lancaster IRs, guitars from Harley Benton, three of them, and loads and loads of software. Pro Mix Academy, everything, everything bundle. That's like two or three grand's worth of software and a lifetime membership produced like a pro and tons and tons of other wonderful prizes. So it's going to be huge. Thanks to the band and thanks, Henning, for letting us have these multi-tracks to mix. Well, it's not like the band really had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I I told them that that we're doing this rather rather late in the process. <laughs> I just called up the vocalist and I'm like, hey, by the way, many people around the world will mix your song uh, and you really don't have a say in it. And he's like, dope. <laughs> I think at one point we talked about uh, one of the prizes, or actually three of the prizes, the top three mixes being bonus tracks on the album. Yeah, that's a really rather wonderful idea. Yes. Yeah, that sounds like a, like a fantastic idea, actually. My first idea was obviously the best mix should be the mix on the album. The only problem is I'm mixing the album and then one song is going to be much better than mine. And we can't have that. <laughs> 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 we can't have that. The mix on the album so that it fits in in its mediocrity will be mine. But then uh, we'll we'll do we'll do the top three mixes will be bonus tracks on the album. Well, if it's really great, can it be the single mix? Absolutely. Only that. Okay. What is a single nowadays? You know. <laughs> I. If they do a video, if they do a video, yes, it can absolutely. be the single mix. There you go. We will most certainly pick the best one, not mine, um, for for the video. Fantastic. And then um, tune in tomorrow as well, everybody. Um, Henning has done a full mix breakdown, so you can go back and watch how he mixed it. And like he said, you can outmix him. He's quite happy for you to outmix him. Oh, yes, please. I'm not good. And the multi tracks, there's a link down below. Uh, the prizes are flying around all over the place. You can see what there is to win. Thank you ever so much for all the sponsors getting involved in this because they've all very kindly agreed to do this as a worldwide competition. It's really, really important that this stuff be worldwide. Our last winner, um, Drazen, was in Bosnia Herzegovina. And I've seen recent. Um, mixed competitions where his country would have been excluded. Actually, he came in second, but the reason why I bring him up is because he got a front page article on a national paper from winning or coming in second, coming in the top three of the competition. He messaged me earlier this morning and said to me, he goes, I have two months months of work. Thank you ever so much. Oh, that's fantastic. So basically, that is amazing. So God bless all the companies and everybody involved. God bless you guys for being involved and helping do this because that's what happens is we help somebody out, you know, because no, we don't know. We just judge the mixes. And who's to say that the best mixer in the world doesn't happen to live in India? They can't be excluded from a competition because they're in India or something like that. This is what's so wonderful about this. So thank you because I know it's a big deal because the for some companies, it's really, really expensive to ship to some of these countries. So the fact that they're all willing to do this... Hats off to you all. Thank you ever so much for doing it's, that. It's the only way It's the only way to do it, Ron. I have a yep. different contest going on right now where people have to write a song, and a lot of the prizes are actually here, which means when people win them, I'm going to have to ship them and pay for it. But, I mean, who am I to say it's only Europe? I mean, I have fans around the world, and they have to be able... I, I want to see all of these guys make music. And there's a 12-year-old kid sitting on a couch in India who played the song in insanely beautifully and probably wins like the best solo performance or whatever. I want to see people make music all around the world. Now, more than ever, we are kind of stuck at home and should still be stuck at home. So mixing, writing music, it it all brings us together. So it's a really beautiful thing and should be for everyone. Indeed. Here we are in the middle of a, you know what, all the tensions and everything that's going on in the world at the moment, all the craziness that's going on in the world. 
this is a perfect time to just like look past all of that. So, Glenn, you're going to do a mix of this as well, aren't you? Yes, I'm going to probably do something a few days after this video premieres. I'm going to do it live on my show and just uh, show how I would approach it. Please let me know when that happens because I really want to see that live and comment because um, <laughs> I kind of I'm I'm a I'm a bit of cheeky man. <laughs> What, because you? No. I mean, it's a good thing this is a Warren show because I had the perfect adjective. <laughs> <laughs> when, I had to, when I had to pick the song, I knew that Glenn was going to have to mix it because he's part of this. And I was like, yep. hmm, what would be something that isn't fully up Glenn's alley? Because this is, this is not heavy. Heaviness doesn't win you anything Dude, here. I mixed a country song um, on my show a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just playing note, with you. Note, it had re a real drummer. <laughs> and this, I'm ignoring that. And this isn't your typical, if you make the guitar sound heavy, it, heavy it's going to work because uh, there's a lot, there's three or four guitar layers and then left and right and lots of effects. So uh, uh, I'm really curious to see how Glenn approaches that. Not saying he can't do it, but it's I think it's a derivation from what he's sure. used to. I'm I agree. The, I'm up for the challenge. Of course, we're going to give out some, all the wonderful prizes. We are going to give out uh, Glenn's um, Kemper pack and his... Impulse responses as well. Yep, indeed. So that's that's including the full Lancaster bundle as well. And Glenn, what else are we going to give away from you for uh, your audience? I'm going to do a one-hour Skype call. Uh, we can talk about your mix situation, setup, all that kind of stuff. See if I can help out in some way. I think that'll be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the recording process? Well, I suppose tell us about the band and the recording process. The band is a local band from my rural area back in 2000. Six, I came back to Germany and uh, started a tiny little studio in the attic of the house that I was renting. And uh, I think a year or two later, that band kind of got wind that I was there. They were looking to do more than uh, than the EP that they had done. So they were looking for a full album and um, met with them. And we did all that in that little attic. Uh, and since then, I'm involved with them. Uh, if someone in the band drops out because they can't do a gig, I jump in on bass or guitar or whatever. And I've always been more than their producer. I've been like the, you know, we, we, we co-write some of the stuff. Uh, I, I play guitars on the recording. Uh, it's, I'm kind of the, the band member that doesn't go to rehearsals uh, or goes to gigs, an honorary band member kind of. So uh, they're good friends of mine. I think two or three years ago, they toured with a big band, did a, a one week European tour, had to, you know, buy themselves into the tour, but very cool, bigger deal. And that band then wanted them to go back on tour with them. But the, they had to realize, wait a second, our writer and vocalist is a teacher. But doing a, a tour simply isn't smart. He would have to give up his job, a secure job. They decided it's never going to be more than a hobby. Because if you want to take off, you have to be able to do a tour anytime, any place. And they can't. Half the band split because it wasn't going anywhere. And then they kind of reformed in their original uh, four-piece bad with the original members and said we're going to do this for fun and that's it just for fun and then they came to me and said well we want to do a second album but just for fun also means no money <laughs> so <laughs> well, that's that's how it is and even if it's not just for fun bands don't have money you know it's it's the music industry nowadays so uh, i said well we talked a whole afternoon i said well why don't we turn this into content if I can turn it into content, then I can justify working with you. Because otherwise, it's we all know how long an album takes. I can't do that and then sacrifice that time and take it away from my YouTube because that's how I make money. And then I had this idea, let's do live streams of the productions. From day one, uh, we are live streaming the full process. And that includes fighting, arguing, that includes writing lyrics for two <laughs> hours, that includes working on a song for two days and then throwing that song away because it doesn't fit on the album. It includes vocal sessions. And with my video setup here, uh, we're literally live streaming in um, in 4K with 17 cameras. You think he's compensating for something. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, one, some of us can, Glenn, and others cannot. Uh, so... The thing is, you can literally go and during the live stream, if someone's on the coffee maker, you know, we can switch to the coffee maker and show them chatting there. So we want people to have a full window into what it's like to make an album. Not the highlights, not the cutting it together and showing the good bits where 
it's the take that made it on the album. No, it's the one and a half hours of playing crappy solos till you have the good one. It's right. the me teaching the guitar player how to finger the, the chords correctly and doing it over and over and trying to get the get the performance right. It's us recording two or three guitar sounds and then four hours later realizing, oh, we have to do it again because now in context, they're crap. So we're recording them again. It's it's all the faults. It's all the ups and downs of a full album production. We have, I think, 17, 17 parts now online and they're the, between five and seven hours long. Each one. Yeah, it's it's... It's live. It's they show up at around six, and we stream until we're done that evening, which is usually midnight or one o'clock. Yep. So we, we do the full uh, the full thing, and then pizza comes, and we sit there and eat pizza, and you watch us eat pizza. I mean, because <laughs> you have to have a break. So I tune at midnight. I watch you eat pizza. Okay, I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the great thing is, the audience is actually becoming part of the album because we're sitting here writing lyrics, and then in the chat. People throw in ideas, and not one, not two songs. I think more of that, more of the songs now have actually lyrics and actually choruses written by the audience. And then we're kind of stuck on like, ah, oh, what should we do here? And then people just write chords in the in the chat, or people say, try a fuzz on that. So the the audience actually becomes part of the process, which is uh, just amazing. I love that. So is it up on your channel? That's up on my channel, yep. In those live streams, we get a lot of questions like, you know, why aren't you tracking drums? Um, why is Henning playing guitar and not the guitar player? Then, you know, we answer that because, of course, people have this romantic notion of the band standing in a room playing it live, which, of course, for many styles, and it, 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 that's, that's a way to record, and that absolutely is valid, and it's great. That's how music has been done. But there's other ways to make music, and in this case, we're doing it a different way. I'm on it now. I'm watching in the background. Live production session with CLC. Yeah, hats off to you, man, for doing that. That had to be... That had to make a difficult job even more difficult, you know, just doing all the streaming and whatnot. Once the system is set up, uh, I have one of the band actually sitting in the control room switching all the cameras. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, uh, finding somebody to vo finding somebody to volunteer to run the switcher for that long. No, no, no. It's it's always one of the band, but okay. also, but they're not excluded from the stream. There's a camera on them, so they they can always switch to themselves and make a comment. Um, the uh, the Mac is actually just going into the switcher like a camera. So we have picture in picture when there's vocal sessions. We actually have several cameras on the vocalist, and actually with my system, I can give him Cubase up on the 65 inch screen in the in the living room. So he's saying, I want to see what we're recording, and he actually has a big screen in front of him. He can see what we're doing down here. This wouldn't be doable in an average studio because the video system in this house is utterly ridiculous. Yeah, great, great work. Yeah, the quality is amazing here. I'm just uh, watching some stuff here. It's quite funny though, but you were all drinking a cup of tea or coffee or something. <laughs> you would think that watching a live stream like this is boring because I you're sitting here, you're developing a riff, and you know how that is. Oh, yes. You're playing it, you're playing it, you're, you're, you're fiddling around with it, and that might take half an hour. And then someone comes in and says, try this. But to a lot of people that have never seen a recording process, uh, the, the feedback on these is amazing. We don't get a ton of clicks. We don't get, you know, 10,000 clicks on that. They probably have 2,000, 3,000 clicks on, on average. Um, but I don't mind because we have people that sit there the whole evening with us. They will tune in from minute one until we're done. And one of the most amazing things is, uh, Someone who always comments and does like super chats uh, and insults me in them. Uh, I called him out in one of the streams and I said, uh, dude, you just put your money where your mouth is. Where do you live? And he happened to live two and a half hours away. I'm like, come here, you know, if you want to say that. Two and a half hours later, he stands outside my door with a case of beer. And um, he came over and hung out. And he actually has come over two more streams now. So he's kind of part of this and he is a viewer from YouTube. Oh, that's great. I know how that kind of stuff goes. I, I remember um, I was doing drum sessions one day at Harmony and so we go up to Guitar Center to go get some some pads for the kick drum and whatnot and some kid you know, from India is visiting and he's a fan of the show and he's a drummer. I'm like, hey, we're doing drum sessions. Want to play on something? Come on down. You know? Glenn actually was in one of those live streams. Yes, yes, I was. Didn't I fall asleep on the couch? You fell asleep on the couch? Well, because the song we did that day literally was the quietest song <laughs> for the whole album <laughs> and the least metal thing for Glenn ever. Yep. Um, he still had, had, had some good comments, but it just wasn't his thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think there's literally a video of me passed out on the couch during this thing. Yeah. <laughs> 
Fortunately, the song you provided for this one is a little more rock and roll. Yeah, give us, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the song. Okay, well, the song is called Patiently. I originally told uh, Raphael, or Raphael as we call him, I told him, dude, that sucks. <laughs> um, they, come in with a, they come in with a recording from the practice room. They have a digital mixer there, so they, they're doing individual tracks. And they came in with a recording, and I was like, well, I said, it's very whiny. Um, <laughs> I kind of like the, I like the feel of the verse, which was very kind of floaty, and it had like an ostinato uh, bass. That was all nice, but then the chorus hit in E minor, and it was very whiny and uh, without <laughs> stepping on people's toes it was very like muse it had these long drawn out notes and it reminded me of something old timey for, for me a chorus hits and it's gotta lift you somewhere and this made me want to shoot myself which is fine for maybe the cure or some other band but it just didn't fit into the band's sound and I, th- I made the stupid suggestion play the chorus just change every chord to major, which doesn't really make sense, especially coming from E minor. I said, Rafa, start in E major. And he did. And we changed the chorus in its feel completely. And that's what we have now. And actually, it was strange to the ears first. And then we were like, no, this this could work. It's definitely a, an odd feel going from that floaty uh, verse to that very majory happy chorus, but was good enough for us at that point. I think the song's great. I think people have a blast mixing it. Um, I think one of the things we were touching off off camera was the fact that this is uh, real guitars through real these things called amplifiers. Yes, yes. I was I was saying, where's the DI track heading? I've been playing around, and it's like it's like your guitar tones. Okay. But uh, I would love to put it through 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 an amp and mic it up myself, but that's not an option. You've robbed us. No, it's not. Because <laughs> I know what you would do with it, and I'm not going to let you do that with it. I never record DI. I print the thing that I want because I uh, I don't believe in reamping. Because I know it's a nice crutch. I know it's it's good to have when whoever recorded it doesn't know what they were doing. I believe that I know what I'm doing. When you're playing an amp, it is an instrument. The amp is an instrument. It reacts how it uh, uh, you play with it. And you I change agree. the sound, Entirely. you change the amp, yep. you play differently. So if I do DI and, and then someone sends that into an amp, that's not me playing through that amp. That is a different performance. And I, I'd rather just play it again. I'd rather, if I want a different sound, I'll rather just track it again and react to the amp. So the sounds on this song, I would assume are very likely the Syn 50 from Synergy with the BEBB module. So I'm going to assume the cleans are the BB. That's the Bucks and Betty side, which is a beautiful clean. Could also be the Sky King from Tone King, which I use for all my cleans. And a lot on this album, we use the Brown Eye module in the Syn 50. So like a typical, like more high gainy. Marshall, but without actually ever going super high gain. This is not a metal band. This isn't even this. I call the music pop rock. You don't need a massive guitar tone. No, you're you're absolutely right. And and that Sin Fifty is is spectacularly versatile. You know what I mean? I've got one sitting yeah. like right here. Except you know, I, I've usually got uh, I've usually got the the Plexi in one module, and then I kind of swap the other ones around because the the Plexi module is my favorite on that one. Yeah, you you totally would get those sounds with the with the Plexi. It's Typically going through the aux from Universal Audio, I really only have one cap in there that I use, and it's a 412 Queenback, mic with two mics. You know, the typical 57 and then some bigger one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like a Tom <laughs> mic of some sort. Yeah, exactly. That's basically the uh, Cameron Webb, Ulrich Wild, Terry Date thing. Yeah, I mean, that's what we use for the guitars. There might be some other amp here or there. Uh, for a lead tone, I might go to something else. I mean, I have quite a few amps, uh, but... Whoever actually, this is the cool thing with this mix competition, whoever actually wants to see the full process, it's online. Cool. Right. You can watch the full session and everything we did on that song. Fantastic. That's amazing. Oh, also uh, on the on the guitars, one final word is uh, effects, we do print. That's fine. Because uh, if the guitar has a delay on it, I used to be, I think this is what Glenn primarily would do with a delay, for example. I used to be the guy that says, I'll do it all in plugins. But 
you do play very, very differently when a delay is on and you have it as a pedal. Yeah, I, w- I would agree with that. And other effects. So there, uh, on the clean guitar, for example, there's a big kind of a filter swoosh on it, which we did with the transmitter from Earthquaker Devices, which is a reverb that uh, has a big low-pass filter on it. So you can put a um, an expression pedal uh, on the floor and actually sweep that. So Rafa played those uh, chords in the verses. Uh, the higher triads, and uh, we have this beautiful big reverb, which was filter swooshed. And that's, of course, not something you do later. That's part of the performance. So as for the drums, have been using BFD since 2001, I think. Uh, since BFD1, BFD2, now BFD3. Uh, I have, I don't know, 600 gigs of drum samples that I've bought over the years. For me, BFD is the most detailed drum program. I take offense when people say drum computer, because that implies that you push a button, you go to groove number four, and it's playing that. But that's not what I do. Uh, but I love I groove number four. I know, I know, I know Glenn's a huge fan <laughs> of groove number four. Yeah, everybody <laughs> uses it, can't you tell? <laughs> Yay, modern rock. But that, but that is the problem. That is how people use something like you know, that superior drum and all these things, they have the built-in groove library and then people use those and then it is the performance that someone else has. Uh, I've never once used something like this. I literally place every single hit on the screen with the mouse by myself. And I've been doing that since 1991. So I've been programming drums a long, long time. I actually have been asked by bands solely to do the drums on the album. And I've done that uh, for certain bands. So BFD has the most detail, but I haven't found a very modern, super in-your-face, I'm going to use the word nickelback, kick kick and snare, the Chris Lord algae sound, where the kick is just this monstrous big thing that hits in the mix, and uh, the snare as well. I mean, when you listen to uh, A Green Day, there's a 16th fill coming in on the snare, just a roll, and it's it's like a machine gun. It's this massive snare sound, and I haven't been able to find that in BFD or even do it mixing. It's probably because it's in the recording. You know, that's yeah. not it's not always a sample. That may not have been Chris. That was an incredibly well-recorded record, like really, really well-recorded record. And some records just come up on faders and sound absolutely beautiful and massive. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the record. If you had the raw files, they would blow you away. So what I do now, if I want something hard-hitting and hard-rocky, I'll do the BFD because... Uh, I get all the details. I need like really detailed snares and kind of like ghost notes on the snare and detailed hi-hats and all that stuff and a beautiful room sound and all this. But for the hard hitting stuff, I go to uh, uh, Stephen Slate drums and there's a Chris Lord algae package and that doesn't do details. Like the hi-hats, the cymbals, it's all, you know, on, off. And the same thing kind of like the, the snare is so compressed that if you try to do little ghost notes, it would sound horrible. So I use for all the for all the main hits, two, four, you know, all the hard hits, uh, the kick and the snare. That is being doubled by Stephen Slate. But the thing with BFD, we have to say this to the people wanting to mix. I think there are mix presets within it. I've never used those. I actually channel out. I go and and, and route out every single thing in BFD to Cubase. And I've got 16 tracks there, just like you would have real drums. And what comes out of BFD are the raw recordings. There's no pre-processing in BFD. So what you're getting is what you would get if you had mic'd it. So you have to do all the work just like a normal mix. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I've been playing around with it a little bit, and I'm like, okay, it's normal mix, except for, you know, like uh, there's like absolutely no hat blade in the snare mic, that kind of stuff. I don't use... In BFT, you could have individual mics on cymbals. I don't know. Does anyone actually mic cymbals? Not individually. Well, except for the ride. I'll put I'll put a mic on a ride. I'll, put, I'll put a ride. If I, if, if I find the ride's not cutting, I'll actually mic it from underneath, right under the bell. But uh, that, that way you get some really nice separation on it. But generally, no. I don't. I mean, like, I, I get tracks sent to me from drummers and stuff like that that I work with on my show. And it's like, I get, you know, like, usually the overheads and then a hat and a ride mic. I usually just mute those. You know what I mean? I, I just like a general picture of what's going on. I've seen some guys get super anal about miking cymbals individually, but eh, it's a little much, I think. Yeah. And that's, that's why that track is, I have that muted. I don't use that. Um, you get the symbols through the room and the overhead and the ambient mic, and that's it. Just like you would on a normal kit. So 
I wouldn't get hung up on that this is programmed drums. I would treat these as normal drum tracks. There's a folder with variations, and that simply is a bleed is turned on on the kick and uh, the snare. See, with, in BFD, you can control the bleed. So if you're Glenn and you like the extra stuff that you don't need and you want to get it out, go right ahead. Um, go right ahead, use the one with bleed and then gate it, or just use the one that doesn't have it on it. Well, I'm excited to see your mix. You're going to... Yeah, th th this video is coming out on a Wednesday, so mm. are you, Glenn? Are we going to see a mix coming up? Uh... I'm, yeah, I'm going to do. A, I'm going to do a mix a few days after it. You know, I think I'm going to do a. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to probably like pre-mix it here in the studio, like for a little bit, but put an hour or two on it, and then maybe I'll do a live stream where where I mix it as well because I want to try a few toys out on it. So, gentlemen, thank you ever so much. Oh, thanks for you having both me. Rock. Rock. You're more than welcome. Always a pleasure, uh, good, sir. I don't quite know how I have the honor of uh, you know being on your channel and. Uh, you guys must have gotten very desperate and no one wanted to give you, you know, files or something. I don't, yeah, I don't know why. It, LA is a pretty hard town to find talent in. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's, it's so a tough you had one to go, here, yeah. you had to go to, to, uh, where the deer lives Germany, which is literally what this town is called. Where the deer lives. Nobody live. cares. <laughs> <laughs> and Glenn has been here many times and he stayed in my mom's bed. Yes, this is true. Uh, Henning's mom's house is, is quite really? lovely. Yes. I don't think you should explore that state. Uh, his mom Let's wasn't just there at the on. time though. <laughs> Is move on. It's, I think he's going to start calling me dad soon. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. No, definitely not. This is getting weird. No. Okay, a good point to wrap up. Getting weird. Download the multi tracks down below. Um, you're going to go to rate my mix. And what you're going to do is you're going to post on SoundCloud. You can post on YouTube. But you have to send in an MP3 or a WAV file, whatever you want to do. But you do have to send that MP3 in to make sure that you get judged. But please join in. Um, absolutely um, excited to hear everybody's mixes. In our last mix competition, we had 6,000 entries. 6,000 entries. Absolutely insane. It was really difficult to get down, but we managed to get it down to 100, and then we got it down to 40, I think 44 or something like that, to choose the top. And even then, we ended up with nine winners. So thank you, everyone who's entered this. Thank you ever so much, Glenn. Thank you, Henning, for this. Really, really incredible. Very, very excited to hear the mixes. These gentlemen here will be part of the judging process because at the end of the day, and I think you were saying, Henning, you want the band to get involved in like the, maybe the top 40. We have to make it a real world thing. And yeah. if we were, let's say, the, the label and we, we say this is good, this is not good, whatever. But in the end, the final say is the band. They got to have to sign off on it. So they, yep. they have to be part of the jury. Thank you ever so much, gentlemen. See you all again very, very soon. Check back for videos um, from Henning. is going to be posting some stuff on his channel. Glenn's going to be posting some stuff on yep. his channel. You can hear the mixes. You can hear Henning's mix breakdown, watch his breakdown. And we'll speak to you all again very, very soon.